In this video, we will be introduced to the power rule, which is a really great and handy rule that you'll probably be using all the time. So here it is. The power rule is a rule that we will use on what we call a power function. What's a power function? It means that we have a function f of x, which is equal to x to some power. All right, this is the power, also known as the exponent, and that power n can be any real number, and this will be true. Okay, if f of x is equal to x to the n, the derivative, f prime of x, is going to be equal to n times x to the n minus 1. Another way to talk about the derivative is to write it in this form. Instead of calling it f prime, you may see it referred to as the d dx of f of x. This is just another type of notation, and we may use them interchangeably. So take a look at both of these left-hand sides of these equations. These are exactly the same thing. These are both representing the derivative with respect to x. And on both sides, you can see that if x is a power, if f of x is a power function, x to the n, its derivative is n times x to the n minus 1. Alright, so let's get started and see how this works. For a quick example, here's a familiar function that we've worked with a bunch of times, probably. The quadratic x squared. So I give you this function. It's a power function. Not only that, it's a polynomial. Not only that, it's a quadratic. What's the derivative? Yeah, so what it says is to just take the n, which in this case, n is equal to 2, and you just take the n down and put it in front, and then you do x to the n minus 1. So 2 minus 1 is 1, so you just get 2x to the 1, or just written as 2x. Okay, so let's try that a couple more times. Let's say, what if I have f of x is equal to x to the 7? What's the derivative of x to the 7? That's right, you're just going to go ahead and take the 7 and bring it down in front, and then you'll do x, and then it'll be to the 6th power, because 6 is 1 less than 7. Okay? This doesn't just work on positive whole numbers. This works for almost anything. So, for example, what if f of x was equal to x to the minus 2? Alright, so if you remember the negative powers, hopefully you do, this can also be written as 1 over x squared. Now, if you see someone give you f of x is equal to 1 over x squared, you will probably re want to rewrite it as x to the minus 2 because it has to be in this form, x to the n. You see over here, this is a fraction that's not in that form. The form is that you just have the 1x and it's to the n. Alright, so here we would have to rewrite this as that, x to the minus 2. Go ahead and use the power rule on that. Okay, so here's where it gets a little tricky. You probably brought the minus 2 out in front, which is correct, but what power did you raise the x to? Minus 2 minus 1 is minus 3. So hopefully you put a minus 3 and not a minus 1. If you put a minus 1, you actually added 1 to the number, but the rule is no matter what the n is, you always take 1 away. So if the n is negative, it actually goes down by 1 again, so minus 2 goes to minus 3, and you might actually see this like this, that's the other way to write it. Alright, so that's a little review of negative powers, and let's just do a review while we're at it of the fractional powers. Okay, because sometimes you might see a function like this, let's say I gave you f of x, for example, is equal to the square root of x. At first you may think we cannot use the power rule on this, but we actually can, we just have to write it in its familiar form, x to the what? Do you remember? x to the one-half. That's right, this is a fractional power, x to the one-half, and the rule will still work. So go ahead and practice the rule. What are you going to get here? One-half comes down, x to the one-half minus one. You always minus one, so you get a minus one-half. Okay, so I'll just write that on the side. Minus one-half minus one is minus one-half. So that's where that came from. Just like over here, minus two minus one is minus three. So that's why we got the minus three there. Okay? Let's try it on another one. So I'll try to be tricky here, and I'm going to write my function f of x. Um, let's see, one over the cube root of x. Alright, I'm telling you that this is a function that you can use the power rule on, but you will first have to rewrite it as its power function, x to the what? 1 over the cube root of x. It's got the x on the bottom, so it's going to be a negative power. 
It's also got a root in it, so it's going to be a fractional power. So the answer is x to the minus one-third. And now go ahead and take the derivative. Okay, so the f prime of x here, take the minus one-third out in front. You see I carried the minus with it and all. And then x to the what? What did you put there? Minus 4 over 3. Hopefully you put that in place like that, and that's because minus 1 third minus a whole nother 1 is minus 4 over 3. See, so that's how I get that. Now you may also want to rewrite this kind of like how I wrote it like this, and then it would be negative 1 over 3 cube root of x to the 4. Okay, so make sure that you've reviewed the fractional and negative powers because you should be able to comfortably work back and forth with those. Alright, nice. Now let's talk a little bit while we're at the fractional powers about where a derivative may not exist. Okay, we visually noted that a derivative does not exist when you have a sharp corner in your function. But now I'll show you another time when a derivative may not exist and we'll use the power rule to investigate it. Let's say that we have the function f of x is equal to x to the one-third, and if you graph that function, it looks like this. It's a sideways cubic function. Uh, actually, let me have to be a little more extreme about it. It looks like this. Okay. All right, let's take the derivative of this function, and I claim to you that this function is not differentiable everywhere. It is continuous everywhere because I can draw it without taking my pen off the page. So this function is continuous everywhere. But even though it's continuous everywhere, I'm going to say it's not differentiable everywhere. And you might say, but I don't see any sharp corners, so where does it possibly have a problem? The answer will come after we take the derivative and look at the functional form of the derivative. So use the power rule to take f prime of x. What's that going to be? Let's see, the one-third comes down in front, and then we get, oh, sorry, in case you can't see that, f prime of x is going to equal one-third x to the minus two-thirds. Right, one-third minus one is minus two-thirds. Um, and can you guys now see why I'm saying it's not differentiable everywhere? What I'm saying is, its derivative, this function, does not exist for all x. There's one x in particular where things really go bad. You see what it is? It might be a little hard to see what it is unless you take it and rewrite it like this. Okay, so now let me take the fractional negative powers and rewrite it like this. 3 cube root of x squared. Now you can see you have a fraction. Are you going to divide by 0 ever on that fraction? only at one point when x is equal to zero. So it's not differentiable when x is equal to zero, f prime of x does not exist. Because when x is equal to zero, I would be dividing by zero there. It would be one over zero. One over zero, what's that? That's the vertical asymptote form. That's when things are get infinite. And it's a little bit hard to see. A lot of people, when they see this picture, would not realize that right here on this point, if you tried to draw the tangent line, in fact, the tangent line would look like a vertical line. It's kind of hard to see why that's true. It's, it's kind of hard for me to draw the vertical line like that. But what happens is the function is going like this, and then it goes up, and then it goes up really, really fast. When x is equal to 0, its rate of increase, the slope of the tangent line, is infinite. It's going up infinitely fast, and then it starts to level off right there. And you can see that in the derivative, because if I plug in x is equal to 0, that's not going to exist. It's equal to positive infinity, really, when x is equal to 0. Okay, so that's another way that a function can be continuous somewhere, but not differentiable. All right, so I hope you get to know the power rule quite well because that power rule is extremely useful and we're going to be using it all the time.